verse 2 of chapter 13 that he was sick over his sister for she was a virgin and it was improper improper means it was not right for Amnon to date or be with his sister well for most of us like duh dude is half sister you you're crazy you would and she's 15 for crying out loud in those days things were a little bit different in Leviticus it says that God prohibited Israel for people to date marry within their family so God prohibited like stepsisters stepbrothers they couldn't do that so what do you do when you have a crush on somebody and God's word says no I know you probably don't have this problem but I'm pretty sure you've had a crush on somebody that God's word is very clear not good well your parents told you it's not good <laughs> or somebody else told you this is not good for you they're not a believer for example or maybe they're the same sex or or something else but you have strong feelings what do you do now if you're not a believer if you're not a follower of Jesus Christ what do you do well you do nothing you let the feelings take control why because in Christians God is love but if you're not a Christian love is God what love wants love gets there are people applying for a marriage license with the horse in the United States there is a person that's applying for a marriage license with his laptop this is real you can google it and you know why because they say well if a man can marry a man because of love why can't I marry a horse because of love and who are you to judge why anytime you make love a God we're gonna have a twisted society because anything you love becomes legal love becomes the moral standard my God is love but love is not God can somebody say amen and so what I want you to see here as a believer now if you're not a believer for example and you know you're attracted to the same sex or you you know honestly you can do whatever you want the reason why is because you are your own God so whatever you come up with and you usually come up with rules as you go whatever you come up with honestly I stand aside and I will not judge you why I don't judge fish for swimming and fish fish for swimming birds for flying men for walking on the ground and I don't judge sinners for sinning it's who they are we don't judge but if you are a believer who submitted and whose God is not you but the one who lives in heaven whose Savior is not you but the one who died on the cross then you have to submit your biology to your theology. Your sexuality to your spirituality. Your feelings to your faith. Your chemistry to your Christ. Why? Because you have a God and He is your Savior. Maybe some of you are saying, well, this is a good moment. I want to switch the camps. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to tell God to tell me what to do. Remember, if you make yourself a God, you also have to be your savior. Good luck. Most of you will realize by the time you get 30, you're a terrible God. And when you die, you realize you're a horrible savior. You, because you can't save yourself, don't try to control your life. See, the best thing of us as Christians we understand is this. Is that yes, is sometimes our flesh wants to do certain things. And when we submit to God, you know, it maybe brings a little pain to our flesh. But we know that God is good. What He wants is good. We, we me and my wife, we have a dog. And they've done a study and they said that dogs have 300 million olfactory receptors we have six million so dogs the brain in the dogs uh, the part of the brain that analyzes the smell is 40 times bigger than in my brain so the smell part in the brain in the dog is 40 times bigger than mine and they have 300 receptors 300 million receptors where I have only six million so you can imagine one thing when a dog comes in he smells things on the level I will never ever be able to comprehend so because of that he is drawn to things based on his senses and his smell for example our dog he doesn't differentiate between underwears and sandwiches he doesn't he doesn't differentiate between pork and between his food I remember one time they made waffle for a previous internship 
They made waffle to sell for the mission trip and Saul left the waffle on the on the kitchen table and the dog during the night went in and he marked all the stacks of waffle on every single stack. Don't worry you guys already ate them. It's, it's been about seven months. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We didn't sell those. <laughs> we did not sell those. Relax. <laughs> he marked all of them. Now it tasted good. It smelled good. And then Saul woke up and Jacko was dead. He lay there. He couldn't move. He, she thought he died because of all that he ate. See he doesn't understand. A lot of times on Mondays is when Jacko doesn't eat. He lies sick and he lo looks dead. Why? Because on Sunday when we take him to my parents house he eats from our table he doesn't control he he lets his feelings he lets his urge and his his senses tell him what to eat and then he pays for it on Monday therefore he has people that care for him and they put a leash on him and the leash that we have on him it's not because we hate him we love that sucker the leash we have on him it's not because we want to kill him it's not because we want him not to have fun it's that because we know if we don't control those urges he will kill himself see your theology is a leash on your biology put it on control yourself control your passions or they will destroy your life if you let your sexuality run rampant you will kill your spiritual life you will kill your financial life you will kill your physical life you will get things you don't want in your life because you have to allow your spirituality put a leash on your sexuality 